In this video, we will show you how to submit a standard locate request. After logging in and looking at the main menu, select Submit a Locate Request. This will take you to the iTIC user information and excavator information sections. Verify all information, making any changes necessary. Be sure your name and contact info is in the iTIC user information section. When you are ready, click Next Step. This will take you to steps 1 and 2. First step 1. On-site contact information. Enter the name and telephone number of a person who will be on-site during the excavation, such as a job supervisor. If locators have questions, this is likely the first person they will attempt to contact. If you will be the only person on-site during the excavation, enter same here. Step 2 is excavation information. For type of work, enter the purpose of the excavation. You may use the keyword auto search function here. For instance, entering a word like install will bring up a list of potential matches. For the next question, work done for, enter the name of the company, person, or organization you will be doing the work for. For duration, enter the amount of time you expect the excavation to take. Enter a number in the open field and use the drop down menu to cycle through hours, days, weeks, or months. The next three questions refer to your methods of excavation. Select Y or Yes for any that apply, and N or No for any that do not. Then use the drop-down menu at the Depth question to select the maximum depth you will be digging. When you are finished, click Next Step. You will then be taken to Step 3, Location Information. Use the drop-down menu to select the county you will be working in. You can type the first letter of the county name to skip to that section in the list. Then do the same for the city. If you will be working outside of city limits, enter the name of the city that is nearest to your worksite within the county you have selected. For the city limits question, Select Y or Yes if you know you will be digging inside city limits, N if you are certain you will be digging outside city limits, or U for unknown if you are unsure. Enter the number of the address of the worksite in the address field. If there is no address, leave this field blank. Then enter the name of the dig street in the dig street field. You may use the auto search keyword function here as well. For the nearest intersecting street field, enter the name of the nearest road that intersects the dig street closest to where the excavation will take place. This will not necessarily be a major road. In Location Description, enter a complete description of your entire excavation area. Be as detailed as possible. Describe any area where digging will take place, not just where you think lines might be buried. Next is Step 4, the Map It section. In this section, you will need to select an area on the map that will encompass your entire worksite. The IT computer thinks it has already found a match for the address that I have entered. This potential match is represented by a place mark in the center of the screen. There are several tools in the Map It section that can help ensure you are mapping the correct area. Selecting the Identify tool will allow you to click on certain map features to find out more information about them. This information will be displayed at the bottom of the Map section after the word Highlight. Once you have found your worksite, you will need to select an area on the map that will completely encompass your excavation. You will do this by selecting a computer-generated polygon or drawing your own. If the Change Shape button is available, you can use it to cycle through a list of computer-generated polygons. The Change Size button can be used to expand or contract the computer-generated polygons. You may also hand draw your polygon. First, click the Clear button in the lower right corner of the map section. 
This will remove the computer generated polygon. Then select the Draw tool, also located in the lower right corner of the map section. Then draw your polygon by clicking on the map where you would like to begin. Continue to draw until your entire work area is encompassed. To close out the polygon, simply click on the same point that you began. You may also cycle through different map views to be sure that you have mapped the correct area. The satellite map is a combination of satellite imagery and OCC mapping. The Google map is based on information from the Google map database. You will need to have the OCC map selected in order to approve your polygon. Once you are sure your entire worksite is encompassed, move to step 5, start date information. The start date and time will automatically default to the earliest available time, based on when you are filing your ticket. If you will begin your work at a later date or time, you can adjust the start date and time by using the drop-down menus and the calendar buttons. Keep in mind though that if you select a later date and or time, you are agreeing to postpone your work until that point. When you are ready, click Next Step. This will take you to the Utility Notification List. This is a complete list of the utilities that will be notified as a result of your ticket. This list is determined solely by where you map your excavation area. If there is a utility that you know to be missing from this list, it may be wise to return to Section 4 and remap the area. At this point, clicking Next Step will submit your locate request to the call center for review. You may now begin a new ticket or click Finished to go back to the main menu.